Hey there kids, welcome back to Sunday School. My name is Abigail and I'm a teacher here at Community Christian Church of Moore Park. And today we're going to be talking about when Rebecca, when Rebecca becomes a bride. Let's go ahead and watch that story. Isaac was a very special baby because his parents were almost 100 years old when he was born. But Isaac grew and grew and when he was a grown man, Abraham was worried about his son. I wish his mother were still living, said Abraham. He seems very lonely. Since I am old, there soon will be no one to love Isaac. I know what he needs, said Abraham, excited about his good idea. He needs a wife. He needs to get married. Then Abraham called his oldest servant, Eliezer, and said, I want you to make a promise that cannot be broken. I want you to promise that you won't let Isaac marry any one of these neighbor girls. They are Canaanites who worship idols and I don't want him to marry one of them. They might lead him astray from the one true God. Go back to where I live, back to my relatives. My brother Nahor and his granddaughters, maybe one of them might become Isaac's wife. What if the girl won't leave home, replied Eliezer. It's a long ways away. Maybe Isaac better go there and live among your relatives. No. God had me leave that land, said Abraham, much concerned. He promised to give me and my children this land. If the girl you find won't live here, just come back without her. Eliza promised to follow Abraham's instructions. He took ten camels Loaded with the best of everything his master owned, he was trying to impress this this would be bride for Isaac. Finally, after traveling many days, the servant came to the right village. He made the camels kneel down outside the town beside a spring. He knew that the young women from the village would come near to get water. I wonder who will be the right one for my master's son, said Eliza. What if I bring back the wrong girl and Isaac won't marry her? What if she's pretty but not nice? So he prayed, dear God, I need your help. When I ask a girl for a drink and she says, yes, I, certainly, and I will feed your water, feed water to your camels too. Let her be the one who will become Isaac's wife. Just then, Rebecca, a very beautiful young girl, came to the spring to fill her water jug. Maybe this is the right girl, thought the servant, and he approached her and asked, May I please have a drink of your water from your pitcher? I will be glad to give you a drink, she said, and she poured some out from her jug. I'll give your camels some water too. They must be very thirsty. And Rebecca carried water to the camels. That was a lot of water for each camel because they can drink gallons of water. The servant thought this was almost too good to be true. She's doing exactly what I prayed for, he said to himself. Who is your father, said the servant, and may we stay at your house tonight? My father is Bethuel. And yes, we have plenty of room for camels and a guest room for you to sleep in, answered Rebecca. The servant bowed his head and prayed, thank you God for leading me to the right house of my master's relatives. Rebecca came, ran home to tell her family what had happened. When her brother Laid, Laban saw the ring and bracelets and, ser, and the servant had given her, he ran out to meet him. Come and stay with us, friend, said Laban, Re Rebecca's brother. So Eliza went home with Laban before, before Eliza would eat supper. He explained why he had come. I asked God to send someone to give me a drink and my and water for my camels too, and Rebecca was the answer to my prayer, said Eliza. Then Laban and his wife answered, The Lord brought you here. How can we object? Let her be the wife of your master's son as God has planned. Oh, thank you, God, said the servant. Then he gave Rebecca gold, jewels, and lovely clothes. He gave her family valuable presents too. The servant was so excited about 
and God's answer to his prayer that he wanted to leave right away and go home and give the good news to his master. At first, he, her parents wanted Rebecca to stay a while for a few days so she could prepare to go, but she decided to go along with the servant the very next day. The next morning, Rebecca and her servant girl mounted the camels Eliza had brought, and the group traveled to the home of Isaac and Abraham. Rebecca became Isaac's wife, and Isaac was not lonely again. God wants to give us good things, but he wants us to ask for them and trust him to give us what we need. We should pray that his will be done in our lives. Your guys' memory verse this week is, For thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Psalms 31, 3. This is such a great reminder that God will guide us into what decisions that we need to make. Now, you guys might not be making some big, super huge decisions as of right now, but as you get older, bigger decisions will come, and God will guide you to making the right decision, just like he guided Abraham's servant into making the right decision uh, to bring Rebecca home for Isaac's to be Isaac's wife. Um, so that's just a really great reminder and we can remember and be thankful that God knows the whole plan. God knows every single thing that's going to happen to you and he will guide you along the path to doing his will. So that should encourage you guys to remember that there might be some bigger decisions that you guys will have to make, but in the end, God knows exactly what you're going to choose and he's going to guide you to doing his will. Hi, boys and girls. I am back and I am looking forward to worshiping with you this morning. This is just a reminder that in this video, I can't do all the hand signs with you because my fingers are going to be busy playing piano for you, okay? So let's go ahead and sing Do Lord together. Do Lord, oh do Lord, do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, do remember me. I would like to teach you a song today. It's called the B-I-B-L-E. And before we start, I thought, you know, I'd look around the room and I'd get a couple Bibles out and show you what they look like. And I I found so many of them. You're not even going to believe this. Here is a children's NIV Bible for kids. Here is another one, the beginner's Bible. Here is another children's Bible where all the verses are done in rhymes. And these are books that I used to use when I taught the kids how to sing in Sunday school a long, long time ago. Here is a paperback version of the Holy Bible, a hard copy of the Holy Bible. And I have one more version of the Bible here on my phone. Boys and girls, that is six copies of the Bible. Oh my gosh, how many people have? And that is just a small small room, this tiny little room over here. So it's a very good book. And I thought it would be very fun to teach you the song today, the B-I-B-L-E. So here we go. I want you to put your hands out in front of you like you're reading a very good book, the good book, the Holy Bible. And I want you to sing the B-I-B-L-E. And then I want you to point to yourself and sing yes that's the book for me put your hands on your hip and stomp your feet i stand alone i'm a word of god 
and then put your hands back out. The B-I-B-L-E. Let's do that one more time. The B-I-B-L-E. Point to yourself. Yes, that's the book for me. Hands on your hips and stomp your feet. Stand alone on the word of God. And back out to your hands. The B-I-B-L-E. All right, now. I'm going to play piano for you, so my hands can't be doing that. My hands are going to be busy playing the piano. But maybe our helper, helper, yeah, that's what a helper does, right? They help us. So maybe they can do the hand signs for you. And the words are up there for the helper so that they can read them too. All right, here we go. The B. This one is called Down in My Heart. So the words go like this. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. And when we say the word joy, we're going to put our hands up like, yay, yay, like you're really happy. Like if you were to bounce up and down, right, you, when you're really happy, you would move your hands around. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart. Down in my heart, I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. Now, the red verse says, I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap my arms around myself and I'm just going to go back and forth because that's what the love of Jesus reminds me of when um, I think of God loving me and Jesus loving me. It's kind of like my mommy or my daddy were giving me a great big hug. And I feel so safe and I feel so content when I'm with them. And so you're just going to put your arms around yourself. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart down in my heart to stay and once again when i am here and playing the piano for you i can't do all the hand signs so that's something you need somebody to help you with okay you just have to remember to do it by yourself here we go i've got the joy 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 down in it boys and girls i had fun worshiping with you once again have a wonderful blessed day and i'll see you in the next video bye all right so for today's activity you guys have this little coloring page that you guys can color of rebecca feeding whoa i'm not able to hold this of rebecca feeding um the servants camel's water um and he looks kind of suspicious in the background he's probably trying to decide like oh is this the right one that i'm supposed to bring home um and you guys can go ahead and color this now let's go ahead and move on to some crafts which i will be talking about camels and some fun facts that you may or may not have known about camels all right kids so for this craft you guys can pull out some crayons your guys' sheet that looks something like this as well as your little brad which looks like this which we will use later as well as some scissors so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start coloring this and while i'm coloring it i'm going to give you guys a couple of some fun facts about camels that you guys may have not heard before so the first fun fact is that camels live in deserts like the Sahara Desert in Africa, but they also can live in some colder climates as well.
Another fun fact that you guys may not have heard before is that camels' humps are not just filled with water. Some people make that myth up and say that it's filled with water, but it's actually stored fat. And the reason why is because they, anytime they are in like a desert area or there's no water or food nearby, they have that fat in them so that it'll nourish their bodies so that they can go um, for several days, even weeks, without drinking or eat, needing water, which is perfect because since they live in the desert, there are some times where they don't get to be able to have water or food. So the next fun fact that you guys may not have known about camels is that they have a third eyelid. Now that may sound gross to some of you guys, but the reason why they have a third eyelid is to help them keep sand and dust um, from flying into their eyes and it helps to protect them. Another fun fact that you may not have known before is that camels um, have the ability to close their nostrils and stop breathing during sandstorms, which is really helpful because if you think about it, if you've got a bunch of sand that's blowing in your face, you're going to be breathing in a lot of that sand. So they have, um, they're able to close their nostrils and that's a really unique design the way God made them because they, he's helping to protect them so that um, they don't um, get a bunch of sand and rocks up their nose. Camels are kind of similar to donkeys and they are used um, for travel. Um, people will put a bunch of their belongings on top of them and they use them for travel. Back then they didn't have cars and so animals were their use for transportation and to be able to carry large items because if you were going to carry all of your items across the desert, all by yourself, that would probably be really difficult. And because they didn't have cars in this time, that's what they had to do. They had to um, stack a bunch of their belongings upon, cam um, upon a camel's back and carry it to wherever it is that they are traveling to. Another fact that you guys may not have known before, and I didn't know it until recently, was that a camel can weigh up to 500, or not, cannot weigh, can carry up to 500 pounds on their backs. That is really impressive that they can carry that much. So they could carry a bunch of belongings as well as people too on their backs. Another fact is that camels can run up to the speed of 40 miles per hour. That's almost like uh, the speed of like a car. So if you think about that, that is really fast for a camel to be able to, um, to be able to run that fast. I wish I had that superpower to be able to run that fast. That would be so awesome. If you guys had to choose a superpower, what would it be and why would you guys choose it? Another fun fact about camels is that they do not start sweating until it is 106 degrees. That is really hot and here in California, it does not get that hot very often. And when it does, you usually will have a heat warning to where you, can st you have to stay inside. But for the camels, they don't mind if it's super hot outside. A camel can also weigh up to 1,320 pounds or 2,200 pounds. That is, I'm not sure if that's about the size of a car or not. I could be very wrong, but I feel like that's close to the weight of a car. Which, if, if I'm right, which I might not be right, um, that would be really big for an animal to weigh that much. Most people that, who see a camel in person are actually really surprised by how big they are um, because they're such huge animals. Sometimes we think that camels aren't very big, but in reality, they are super big. Have you guys ever seen a camel before or maybe at the zoo? Another thing that you guys might not know about cam camels is they are not very picky eaters. And because their lips are super thick, they are able to eat things that other animals um, could end up dying from and actually like getting really hurt from. Um, so they can eat like thorn covered plants um, and things that have spikes on them, for example. All right, so once your picture is colored, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out really quickly. So you guys are gonna cut around this as well as around your image.
All right, so the next thing that you guys are gonna do is you guys are gonna take your little brad and you guys are gonna line up the holes on your camel's head and then your camel's body. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually poke a hole. First, you're gonna just line it up like this and then you guys are just going to kind of wedge your way in there. It's kind of difficult to poke the hole in. You might wanna ask your parents for help because I usually kind of have some issues with doing it. Yep, there we go. So then once you poke your hole in, you're gonna to go to the back and you guys are just gonna spread apart these pieces, which we've probably done used brads before in other videos too. And then now your camel can drink water like this. Hey there kids, welcome back to Sunday School. My name is Abigail and I'm a teacher here at Community Christian Church of Moore Park. And today we're going to be talking about when Rebecca, when Rebecca becomes a bride. Let's go ahead and watch that story. So now we have finished the end of our lesson. So I hope that you guys all have a great week and I will see you guys all in our next week's video. Bye kids.